Have you ever had a colonist wake up in the morning, about to go do some important job, pick up a meal, have some breakfast, and get food poisoning? It's the worst, isn't it? Wouldn't it be nice if that would happen less, if we could figure out a way to reduce the food poisoning? Well, we can, and today we are going to do a little bit of science to figure out exactly what we can do to reduce those food poison chances. Now, let's start out with something that's fairly well known, and that is that our food poison chances depends in part on a stat that our character has that is called food poison chance. As you can see right here for NG, it's 1.8. That means out of every thousand meals she makes, we should expect about 18 of them to give some food poisoning. And if we look at her character, she has got a cooking skill of five. Now, that food poison chance depends on the cooking skill. With a different cooking skill, we'd have a different food poison chance. But one thing that is natural to wonder is, is that all that it depends on? So as we can see here, NG is in perfectly good health. But what if she wasn't? What if she had made some bad eyes? Maybe her dexterity wasn't very good. Or maybe she's even better. Maybe she's got bionic eyes or bionic arms, things that make her even more dexterous or see even better. Will that make a difference? Let's check. Over here we have a clone of NG who is differs only that she has cataracts and so her sight is poor, 30% efficiency. Over here we have someone with bionic eyes with enhanced eyesight of 140. Here's someone with Alzheimer's, so her consciousness is weakened, her efficiency there is 80. A bad back makes her manipulation here down to 90. And bionic arms makes manipulation up to 140%. So these are all variations on NG who differ only in these other skills. And if we come and look, come down. So NG's food poison chance is 1.8. And if we flip through all of these, we will find that each and every one of them also has a 1.8 food poison chance. So that tells us that the only thing that that food poison chance depends on is just the skill in cooking of the cook and not on any other health issues. Health issues will affect the speed with which these people are able to cook, but not the chance of food poisoning. But is the cook's food poisoning stat the only thing that's going to affect how many food poison meals you get? Well, doing a bit of Googling, I found several hypotheses, all to the effect that no, it also depends something about the environment where the food is cooked. And the hypotheses I've come across are four. First, that the floor type of the kitchen makes a difference. Second, that the floor type of where the raw food is stored makes a difference. Third, that the cleanliness of the kitchen makes a difference. Fourth, that the cleanliness of where the raw food is stored is, makes a difference. And finally, the null hypothesis that actually none of that makes a difference at all and only the food poisoning stat matters. So to test this out, we have here this testing facility where we have five separate cells, each of which differs from the others in just one way. In the center here is our control. We have throughout sterile tile in both the kitchen area and in the raw food holding area. And both of those areas are, as you can see, clean. 0.6 is as clean as you can get with sterile tile. Over on the left, we have ones that differ only in that this one has a dirt floor in the kitchen and this one has a dirt floor in the raw food storage area. And these two over here differ in how dirty they are. This one has a very dirty kitchen, minus 4.4, and this one has a very dirty food storage area at minus 4.82. Now I should note that these dirt floors also do make a difference to cleanliness. So this isn't quite a perfect test because these and these will also be a little bit dirty, but these ones really have the exact same floor type and only different in dirtiness. And we'll worry about this difference if it becomes necessary. Now, the way this test works, we have our five cooks. They're all clones of each other. As you can see, their cooking skill all throughout is a three. And that means that their food poison chance is going to be at 4%. That's kind of a baseline to be keeping in mind. They're all going to be set to cook and they're going to make 500 meals a piece in their respective uh, areas, but we also have them set that 
before they cook, they will clean. So everyone who has these clean areas should be keeping them clean all the time. Although if we come and look, the home areas have been cleared here and here. So these fellows will not be cleaning their dirty spots. They'll leave them nice and dirty to make this test work out right. So let's make sure that the bills here have all been unsuspended. There we go. Let's let these fellows get to work. This is going to take them quite a little while, so we'll come back when they're finished. Okay, these guys have finished their cooking and they're having a well-needed rest. And now we can check and see how many poisoned meals they have made. Now the way we do it is we come to the inspector here, and if we hover over a stack of meals, as you can see on that list of information, that third line up from the bottom, it says poison PCT for percent, 0.1. That means that each meal in this stack has a 10% chance of causing food poisoning. That's because the way that this stat works, it attaches to the entire stack and not to individual meals. Now, since there are 10 meals in the stack, we can treat this, if we like, as though it means that one of the 10 meals is in fact poisoned. That won't always work out right. It's a chance. It's possible for none of them to result in poisoning or more than one. But statistically, on average, that's how it's going to work. Now I have gone through and looked at all of these meals and here is what I have found. In this facility here on the far left, there were 20 poison meals. That's a 4% chance of getting poison there. Right next to it, there were 22. That is a 4.4% chance. Over here, there were nine. That is a 1.8% chance, which is incredibly low. Over here, there was a whopping 33 for a 6.6% .6 chance. And over here, there were 16 for a 3.2% chance. Now, I've actually run this test twice, and I've just given you the most recent results. The first time I ran it, we had 18 poison meals over here. That's 3.6%. 13 on the next to it, 2.6. Slightly higher over here, 15 for 3%. 30 over here for 6%. And 13 over here for 2.6%. So in both trials... It does seem that the middle tends to do the best, but by far the worst is always this one with the very, very dirty kitchen. Now that suggests that one major factor is the dirtiness of the kitchen. It doesn't tell us everything we need to know because these ones do tend to be higher. It's not clear if that's because these other parts are having an effect or if instead it's because people are tracking dirtiness from, you know, in here into the kitchen or in here into the kitchen. And it's just that little bit extra dirtiness over time adds up. But since in these trials, both times, the very, very dirty area for the food storage tends to not create as much of a problem as anything else. It tends to be at least tied with this and, and closest to our control here. That gives us a good reason to think it's not the storage area that's causing the problems. It's the kitchen. And insofar as we're having problems over here and over here, it's because dirt gets tracked into the kitchen. And when that meal gets cooked, it's a little bit dirtier. Now, in the last test, you may have noticed that when these fellows finished, they just left their meals sitting in the kitchen. And that may make you wonder, was it the dirtiness of the kitchen that was causing the problem? Or was it instead the dirtiness of the place where the food was being stored? So in this test, we're going to check that out as well. We have 200 meals at each of these benches that is ready to be made. We have our clones of our same two cooks from before. The only difference here is that on this side, we have a very dirty kitchen and a very clean storage area. And here we have a very clean kitchen and a very dirty storage area. Now, as before, these fellows are set to clean before they cook. Make sure they are set to cook. There we go. And we have it configured so that the home area does not cover the dirty areas. Almost missed that, but there we go. So we're going to let these guys get to work and we'll see which one makes more poison meals than which. Back in a moment. Okay, so these guys have finished their cooking and I've done some counting. Over here, there was a total of 11 poison meals. That's 5.5%. Over here, there's a total of 8 poison meals, that's 4%. And if we just double check and remind ourselves, the poison percent of uh, Young here is exactly 4%. So that's exactly what we should expect to be getting out of him, where this is significantly higher at 5.5. So it does look as though it's the dirtiness of the kitchen that is making things look worse, and not anything about the storage area, either where the 
prepared meals are or where the original raw food was. Okay, one final matter we should clear up. It's pretty clear by now that dirty kitchens make for more poisonous meals. But one thing that we haven't quite established is, is it only the dirtiness of the kitchen or does the floor type matter too? So here we have two kitchens. They have different floor types. This one has sterile tile, the very best floor type. This one just has dirt. And if we look though, the, this one is dirty because there's junk in it. And this one is clean, as clean as it can get, which is at negative 0.98. They're both very, very close in dirtiness. If the type of floor makes a difference, we should expect to see additional poison meals over here on top of the ones they get from dirtiness. If not, we should expect these two things to be about the same. So the setup is exactly as it was before. We're going to have each of these guys make 200 meals. They are set as before to clean before cooking and as before the dirty area is set to not be cleaned at all. However, unlike last time, this time we'll just let them leave the meals here on the floor. They'll work a bit faster and the last test showed it's not going to make any difference anyway. So guys, get to work and we'll be back and see how you've done in a little bit. Well, these guys have finished up. Let's just double check. How are the dirtinesses? Yeah, this is still negative 0.97. This is still negative 0.98. Dirtiness has stayed the same throughout. And over on the left, there were a total of six poison meals. That's 3%. And over on the right, there were seven. That's 3.5%. Very, very close. It's still possible that the floor type made a little bit of a difference, but if it did, it was pretty negligible. So here's what we've learned. If you want to keep your poison meals down, the first thing you should do is level up your cooks as fast as you can to get that poison percent stat down. The second thing you should do is keep your kitchen clean. Now floor types do matter for that because different type floors give you different base level cleanlinesses. You can get a much cleaner room with sterile tile than you can with dirty tile. But that sterile tile is not going to help you much unless you keep the place clean as well. You do that, you're going to lower down the number of poison meals you have and have a healthier, happier colony. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know. What should we look at next? What else can we do science experiments on, testing on to figure out how this great game of RimWorld works? Give me your suggestions in the comments and I will see you soon.